recording. And let's see if we can do this on Facebook. It's amazing here, it's working great. <sighs> Okay, let's see. Okay. Ah, second episode of uh, Friendly Parents Story Time. And today I'm going to share a couple of short stories. Uh, instead of continuing with the Guardians, we'll do the Guardians again, but uh, this is what I felt like doing now. So let's see. Oh, we have to screen share first. And optimize. Okay. Now. Uh, Here we go. All right. Um, both the stories I'm going to share today are uh, of parents who are not highly skilled at uh, being harmonious, being friendly parents, shall we say. Yeah, and <clears throat> uh, now when I started, I just did it from one moment to the next. So it is possible to do without knowing, uh, um, having any guidance or not much. Anyway, so let's start today's story. Uh, the first one is ignoring you. And there's going to be, I think, three, uh, three versions of the story. There's going to be the main story and have one ending, then another, and then another. So, okay, here we go. Here's an example of level one, the clarity round at work. This was... Um, before, this is the, the training that I did before the one rule appeared. So, and this is her thinking. Why are they ignoring me again? They just keep playing with their toys. I'm so tired of this. Why do they ignore me? I feel like I've tried everything. Time out taking away their toys, sending them to their rooms. I don't even know what to do. I don't want to spank them, ever. I guess I may as well give that harmonized formula a try. Let's see. The first step is seeing if we just have to understand each other better. Many says it's working for her. Crystal, Jason, oh, I have to go over to them. She walks over and kneels down near them. They're playing on the floor, building something. Crystal, Jason, I need you to pay attention to me. What, Mom? They keep on playing. Jason, Crystal, please look at me. They both look at her. What, Mom? 
I'm going to the store. I need you two to get ready to go with me. But mom, we're having so much fun. I'm glad you're having fun. But when I have to tell you something, I need you to pay attention. We didn't hear you, mom, said Crystal. Yeah, we were too busy playing, Jason added. We're having so much fun, said Crystal excitedly. Well, I'm glad you're having fun, but you really didn't hear me? No, mom, we just keep coming up with better and better games. Did it help you hear me when I came over to you? Sure, said Crystal. Well, it's time to take a break and get ready to go to the store. You can get back to your game when we get home. Okay, mom. Come on, Jason, let's get ready. That was amazing. This is her thinking again. I'm going to have to try that again. I have to remember to go over to them to get their attention. That was amazing. Here, all it took to make things go smoothly was for the mother to go over to the kids to get their attention without struggle. They were glad to give her their attention. They were not deliberately ignoring her as she thought. They were just intently focused on what they were doing. Here is an example of level two, the agreement round at work. But what if the kids don't want to stop playing? Mom, we don't want to go to the store, said Crystal. No, we don't want to go to the store, agreed Jason. We're having so much fun. Many said to keep it respectful and find a solution that we all like. It might be easier for me to go shopping on my own, but I can't leave you here without a grown-up. Can we take some of our toys? Yeah, then we can keep playing. That's a good idea, but you'll have to leave your toys in the car when we go into the store. Many said that the second step, what did she call it? The second round was that we use the first idea that we all like. Maybe this is it. Here is an example of level three, the understanding round at work. What if the kids really don't want to stop their game? Jason said, Crystal, let's stay in the car. Then we don't have to stop playing and we don't have to leave our toys. Mom, I guess we're not done yet. I'm sorry, but you can't stay in the car by yourselves either. Maybe I can find something interesting for them to do so they could take a break at their game. I wish you would help me in the market. What could we do? You can help me decide what food to get. You could get food that you can reach after we decide that we want it. It will help the shopping go faster. Then you can get back to your game. Can I ride in the cart? asked Jason. Sure you can, Jason. That will help the shopping go faster too. Can I get some things off the shelf when I'm in the cart? Yes, if there are things we decide we want and you can easily reach them. This sounds like a shopping adventure. Crystal said, let's just leave all our toys here so we can get back to our game when we get home. Let's go have a shopping adventure and help mom. Yeah, let's have a shopping adventure. This sure is smoother than fighting about it. Thanks, Minnie. I'll have to tell you how it went. Next story, getting started. 
Melinda had been learning about the one rule and it really appeals to her. She feels she has learned enough to begin using this with her nine-year-old daughter. Willow, I hope this is a good time for us to talk because I have something I want to do, but before I can do it, I have to discuss it with you. Is now fine with you? Willow looks up from the cereal box she was reading. Her eyes are blank, not understanding. What is her mother talking about? I want to talk about not punishing you anymore. I know I usually punish you when you do things that I don't like, <clears throat> but I don't want to do that anymore. I want us to be able to solve our problems so we both feel good about the solution. Does that sound good to you? It sounds strange to Willow, but it's better to listen to her mother than not. I guess Melinda is determined not to lose her patience, if it is at all possible, but it's frustrating to have her daughter react to this so half-heartedly. Melinda thought Willow would love the idea. I realized you might not understand how this is going to work. Shall I explain it to you? I guess. Even though Willow is not being the enthusiastic cooperative child her mother might want, Melinda decides to plunge ahead. Is there anything I make you do that you don't like? I don't know. Willow does not want to get trapped into saying anything that might cause trouble for her. She can sense the tension in her mother, though she's not sure what's causing it. Although Melinda is beginning to feel really frustrated, she is determined not to lose her temper, but to persist in this using this new approach. I know this is new for you, it's new for me too, but I really want us to have a good time together and not be mad and unhappy so much of the time. Wouldn't you like that for us to get along together? Yeah, that's why I want to try this new way of treating each other. If you can't think of something, then I would like to suggest something. First, I'd better tell you I'm starting to feel really frustrated, but I'm not going to yell at you or hurt you. I don't want to do that anymore. Willow decides that she had better think of something rather than have her mother think of something. If her mother means it, it could be good. Well, I guess I hate to clean my room. Well, I'm so glad you thought of something. Melinda knows it will be a better introduction of this respectful approach if Willow gets a chance to be actively, positively involved. Now, let's see if we can figure out what to do to change this. So we are both happy with the arrangements. You hate to clean your room, and I like to see your room clean. What if I help you pick up things in your room every night after dinner, so it will never get very messy. I like my room messy. Here's my chance, Melinda thinks. I can show Willow that I'm really willing to work with her. No more oppression, no harsh, belittling judgments about the quality of her intelligence or her lack of proper values or priorities. Oh, I didn't know that. Could I keep my door closed so you don't have to look at the mess? Willow bravely speaks out as the idea occurs to her. Well, I'm willing to try it, but I still need you to pick up your things in the rest of the house, okay? Yeah, that's okay. I'd like to have another meeting about this next week to see if it's still a good idea for both of us. Does that sound fine to you? 
Yeah. Do you really mean you aren't going to punish me anymore? That's the way I want to do it. I think punishing is not good for either of us. It makes us both of us unhappy. I don't want that anymore. Wow. But what if you forget and get real mad at me? Well, that might happen. I'm not very experienced at working things out yet. What do you think we should do? I don't know. Well, one thing my teacher suggested was that when we feel upset by something our child is doing, we tell that child the child that we are mad or frustrated or hurt or whatever we're feeling because of whatever they're doing. Then we tell them that we can't talk about it right that minute, but that we need to talk about it after we have cooled off. Then we go away from the child until we feel calm. Then we can come back and talk about it. How does that sound to you? I wish you just wouldn't get mad at me anymore. I wish I wouldn't either, but I don't think that is going to happen right away. I'm too used to getting mad. But my teacher said that she used to get mad at her children, and now she doesn't anymore. If she can do it, so can I. But I'm not sure how long it will take. So what do you think about the idea of cooling off before we talk? Okay. Willow, I'm sure we can do a good job with this. I'm glad you learned about this, Mom. Okay. That is the end of our story time tonight. I hope you have a really good time using the one rule with your children. Okay, until next time. I thought I'd be doing this sooner, but at least I'm doing it. Oh, yeah, I have to. Stop this. Forgot last time.